update component. Let's go with list, it's the smallest file. And what we're gonna update is the actual list item. List item is gonna want two buttons. One of which is gonna call set selected, and the other one is gonna call remove contact. And I guess we can start adding some styling, which means I can move this here. And I guess I'll still hide this. But each list item, I'm gonna give margin bottom. So if we save this, there's a little bit of spacing here. And then the surrounding div, I'm gonna just use flex and justify between. And that's gonna be because inside of this div, after the paragraph tag, which is the red paren here, we'll have another div that will contain the two buttons, one saying select and one saying delete. And the justify will just space them evenly apart. Let's also add some styling to these buttons. So both of them, I'm gonna do padding top of one and padding on the sides of four. And they'll be rounded, which you can't see right now because we need to add a color. And I'm going with the teal and red for the delete. Uh, let's also give text white to both of them. And then for the second button, let's give it margin left of a little bit. I think I went with two. Now we just need to make sure that these buttons actually do something. So the button's going to have another attribute. This one is the on click method. Select is going to use set selected. Uh, I always forget to move this ending paren to the bottom. So set selected is going to just change the selected from Mary Sue to Kelvin. So here, where's my state? What did I do wrong? Oh, it's called select. Okay. So instead of set selected, this will just be select, save. And now, there we go. So that works correctly. Thoroughly for delete, we'll do remove contact. So Kelvin will go away and so is Mary Sue. But the thing is, if we do a refresh, those will come back because we are not actually sending a delete request, which we need to do. We're going to want to import delete from Ajax core. And if you remember, this is the first library that we included and the one we're using inside of core. But now that we have delete here, we can change this on click method to call the delete. And we need the string, which is localhost 4000 slash API slash the ID. Um, that would mean that we need the ID of contact and surround this with string so that it'll concatenate those two. And once the request is sent, we need a handler function. And that's where we're going to call remove contact, passing in the contact. So back in the browser, when we do a delete here on Mary Sue, um, the wrong route. This needs, this needs to say contacts. All right. Now, if we do a delete on Mary Sue, she will be permanently deleted and the app will update accordingly. Now the next part is going to be the form. So we'll go into the form up top. We'll get from Ajax core. We'll want put and post because we're going to do an update or create based on the selection. Now let's go to the very bottom because I'm going to change this toggle button to be a little better. So I'm going to wrap the button with a div that does margin bottom flex and justify between this needs to be a map. So that's there. And that's because I want two buttons. The left one's going to say new contact and then the right one's going to say edit contact. Uh, let's also add the, these are the same classes that I used on the other buttons, but they look right. Just need to make sure that new contact is going to clear out whatever's in here. And that's going to be done through an on click which we want from our actions. So we'll call new contact here. And I believe we don't need any arguments here. Now new contact will clear it out and edit is still gonna have the form. There's one small problem is if we click edit or select while it's out and then we just do a cancel, it's still there. And I kind of want to fix that a little bit. So I'm going to have a use effect hook here that takes the dependency of selected, which is called contact here. So whenever the contact changes, we're just going to switch it back to the not edit. But the reason why we're setting edit to true when contact doesn't exist is so that whenever we press new contact, 
it'll go straight to the form. But whenever we select a new thing, it'll go straight to not the form. So just the, the display. Uh, we also don't need this. So that takes care of those two buttons. Now let's dial the form elements. So for the label, this one's going to be pretty simple. We're just going to bold it. The input, however, is going to have a little bit more stuff. We'll have the padding and margin for spacing. I do want the width of the input to be full width. Then a shadow, border, and rounded just to make it look a little nicer. So it looks like this. We do need a submit button and we follow the prints. It'll be after this map and that will be this one. Yeah, that's correct. It'll just say submit, but okay. the styling for it is going to be pretty similar to what we had before. The only difference is that we're going to give it full width and it'll look like this. Now we're doing it type submit and that's because all of the work is going to be here on submit. And this is where we're going to determine whether we create a new contact or update. And because this is a form, we need to call prevent default from the event. Before we fill that out, we need to call use app state. I'm calling this app state here so that it doesn't conflict with state and we don't have to update all the references to state. But we're going to need to know whether or not there is a contact being selected. And from actions, I'm going to do something we've seen before, but not inside of a let block. And that's going to be the destructuring here. So we actually want add contact and update contact. So we can destructure it from actions like this. But the unsubmit function is going to be determined by an if. And if there's a selection, we'll update. And if not, we'll create. And those, and those two requests is going to be put and post respectively. I did post first because it was easier. But we'll make a post to API slash contacts. And inside the handler, we'll add the contact that comes back. And because our REST API consumes JSON, we need to set this format as JSON. And lastly, we need to fill out the params because there is one small issue. All right, if we open up our contacts, you'll see that these keywords are using underscores instead of dashes, and our API consumes it as dashes. So the params here would be first name, last name, and email as the keywords. And I'm not gonna do anything fancy with data transformations. I'm just going to destructure everything from selected, which is going to be referred to this thing over here. And we want first name with an underscore, last name with an underscore, and email. And we need to move this to over here. Um, that's because I didn't fill out the put. You know, I, I can actually move this over. So back in here, this is what we want to send in. So I'm going to take this entire block and paste it in. The biggest difference is that we need to change the string here because we actually need the ID from selected. Uh, speaking of which, this one should come from state and this one as well. Sorry, that was my mistake. This will change to update contact. And then the very last thing, sorry, almost done, is that the way we formatted our update in our routes, no, it's inside of our contact, in our backend is that the body of update has updated true and we actually just want this part so our front end we have to destructure this and update it no no we I'm sorry contact there now our front end is done so all we have to do is just play around and test this out so new contact We'll do first dot last at mail.com. All right, and we'll hit submit. And that's not right. Well, that's a good thing we still have logs here. So let's check out the current state. All right, index two, we have it in the format that we want. But index one, there's a count of one. If we open this up, we can see that the new contact is embedded inside of a list. And that's must be a mistake in our state management. So if we go back to our editor, and I'm gonna to want to connect to the REPL for this. All right, so the multi method that we're concerned with is add contact. So once we're connected to the REPL, we could call app reducer here inside of a comment block, and then we'll provide the initial state as the state argument. But we're gonna to need to call add contact, and in that list, we'll just have a payload of 
new guy. But let's send this to the rebel. It seems to be working here. So maybe the problem is actually in the form. So we'll go to where post is, or the handler actually. We'll add a call to log out the response. And my assumption is that the response is inside of a list. So when we do add contact, we're putting the list inside of the list, if that makes sense. But we need to actually see this in action. So we'll go ahead and make a new contact. And this will just be new guy at mail.com and send that through. And I was right. The contact is actually inside of a list when it's being created. That's kind of a quick fix. We can go back to our editor, but we'll just surround this response and just get the first thing because on a create, there will only be one item inside that list. And the formatting is a little weird. So if I do this, it'll look a little better. Now we'll also need to check the update and I already added print statements here for debugging, but let's see if we need to do any debugging. So just to be safe, I'm going to refresh. And we'll edit our new guy. And we don't have to do any weird edits. I'm just going to say newer guy instead. Submit. The response that comes back is a single map. And of course, contact is inside of a list instead of just a map. So that means our state is going to look a certain way. So where new guy is, and since he's the last one, I'm going to assume he's the third index. I assumed there was going to be another list in here, but let's check if our little fix for it. Create is going to work for update. And that fix is to surround the destructuring with the first function. And I'm going to get rid of these print statements because I don't think we need them anymore. But let's check if it works. So selecting newer guy. And this time you're going to be updated to be the newest guy. And now it updates accordingly. So our app is now complete. At least the MVP version of it. So the minimal viable product. There are definitely improvements that we can do. Wow, this is not good looking. Like making the select buttons change colors on focus, and we can do that with. And Tailwind makes it pretty easy to do that. So inside of contact list item where our buttons are, we'll do focus colon and then just a lighter color, so teal 300. And I'm gonna apply the same color for the delete button as well. So now when we press select, it lightens a little bit. So it's more apparent that the button's actually being clicked and focused on. But other improvements to this application, I'll leave it to you, as I think we've covered basically all the tools and knowledge that we need to create a full stack closure project. In any case, I hope you all enjoyed this video, and I'll see all of you next time.